G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. Jupiter is a really dynamic planet. Uh, there's stuff going on on Jupiter all the time. Things change within the 10 hour rotation period of the planet. Obviously, if you're a big observatory with a big telescope and big budgets, you still don't have the time to constantly look at one planet. Today, I'm gonna to try and explain an arcane but mind-blowing piece of software. It's both priceless and free. It's called WinDupos. Join me as I try to explain WinDupos in the simplest terms possible. I haven't used WinDupos before, so I tried to get in and do the minimum number of steps required to simply derotate an image. Hopefully this will help you squeeze a couple of extra sharp pixels out of your planetary image without spending an extra cent. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> So there's the tube, there's the T adapter which comes with the scope I'm pretty sure. I just used a few different spacers to get the right spacer, plus I've got the power mate in here, and the filter wheel and the camera. Come to my attention, despite what my analytics tells me, that there may be kids watching this channel. Uh, so to you kids who are watching this channel, uh, thank you for being interested in science. The world is full of idiots and you guys are the future, but you shouldn't be watching my channel. I'm not a role model. Please do not hold me to the high, high standards of Australian football players. If you are a kid, please don't subscribe. You may grow up to be just like me. The DUPOS project began as a monitoring effort in order to monitor Jupiter's positions and also archive the historical observations that we have of Jupiter over the years. There is a gap between about 1900 and 1960, 1970, but even as they started the project in the early 90s, they had 1.2 million observed positions for Jupiter. Big observatories don't have the time to do this monitoring work, so it's left to us. People like you and me, suckers who have spent their kids' inheritance, on astronomy gear. Jupiter observations have been occurring for centuries, which is why we know the Great Red Spot is shrinking. And this was done manually with pencil and paper. In the early 90s, the DUPOS project was founded in order to archive these observations, but they also wanted to start collecting the data with computer software, which to this day has proved more effective than pencil and paper. An astronomer from Germany called Grisha Hahn developed the Wind DUPOS software, which they now use to collect observations from people like you and me all over the world. Jupiter's surface is dynamic. The features are constantly rolling around in different speeds. In fact, the speed differential between the equatorial belts is why we see features like the hexagon on Saturn's pole. There's nothing weird or alien going on here. It really is just an artifact caused by the difference in rotation of those equatorial belts. Even Jupiter has hexagon features from time to time. Thanks to Grisha and the original Jupos team, the Earth has eyes on Jupiter. In 2009, an astronomer from Australia called Anthony Wesley noticed an impact spot on Jupiter. Thanks to a worldwide network of Jupiter photographers and the incredible Jupos dataset, Hans Georg Medig was able to recreate a time lapse of the impact spot as a polar projection using the WinDupos software. We still don't know what hit Jupiter at that time, even though it seemed to be an impact just as large as the Shoemaker Levy impact. Now the WinDupos software can handle image measurement for a number of different celestial bodies, not just Jupiter. First of all, the reason we do derotation is because when you take a photo of a planet, you'll find that the middle part of the planet is the sharpest and around the edges is less sharp as we're shooting through more atmosphere there. So as the planet rotates, if you grab multiple video stacks so that you have lots of images where the middle area is sharp, you can then derotate these in WinDupos so that you're sharp from edge to edge. It's sort of like stacking stacks, but compensating for the rotation of the planet. You get a much sharper overall image at the end of the day, but it does take many hours of acquisition because you will have to sit there and record the planet over a long period of time, at least an hour or two. You set the program to the right planet. 
you open the image measurement tool, you load a stacked image, you add the outline with the auto detect, you make sure that the date stamp and the poles are correct in the outline, you save the measurement file for each of those stacked images, and then you just load up the measurement files in the derotation tool and compile the image. It's really pretty straightforward. I don't know why it took me so long to get around to working this out. There are a lot of different tutorials and videos out there, but I wanted to show you the bare minimum steps you need to make this happen. Okay, so this is the Wind Dupos program. First, you're gonna select your celestial body. In this case, I'm gonna do a measurement on Jupiter. So I've got Jupiter already selected here, and I am going to go to image measurement. Everything is default settings here. Uh, I don't know why this date is here. I think it must mean something to the Wind Dupos team. Uh, it is the day before the stock market crash of 1987. Okay, I'm gonna go open image and I'm going to open one of my stacked images of Jupiter that didn't turn out too badly. Just go in and change this date to what the date actually was. Normally this is filled out by the metadata in the file, but because I'm using a stack, the metadata isn't in there. So you wanna make sure you have access to the timestamp on the original files that you used to make this image. And you also wanna put it in, in universal time. Then put in your observer coordinates, which are important for the calculation. You can put your observer info in here if you want, but not necessary. Okay, once the image data is in there, go to the adjustment tab. Uh, let's make this a bit bigger just so we can see it. Again, not really necessary. And we wanna go down to this outline frame and go to automatic detection. And that's done a pretty good job. However, I know for a fact that uh, that's not the Northern Pole. So I'm gonna hit backspace or delete and it flips it to the right orientation. I'm gonna zoom in because what I'm interested in measuring is this little storm down here. This is the outbreak in the Northern Equatorial Band that uh, has been reported recently. The uh, great red spots over here and it's moved away from the red spot but my father-in-law asked me the other day, he said, uh, how big is that storm? Looks like it's probably about as big as Australia, right? And I thought that was a pretty good estimation, but I didn't have the answer offhand to be able to tell him. Uh, but thankfully, this tool will let us actually measure it. So we can click on measure distance. We get a nice little ruler, and I've put my little measurement in there, and it tells us 7,000 kilometers. So that is a pretty big storm. Now say we have a bunch of these frames and we want to derotate them. The first step will be to load them up how we did here, put in the timestamps, get that outline automatically detected, and then just hit save. And it will save an image measurement file. So I'll stick that in there. And I'm going to do that with uh, two other images for this stack, which I know are pretty good. So now I have my three Windupos image measurement files in here. That's enough for us to do a derotation. So I'm going to go into tools and derotation of images. I am going to add the three files we just created. Uh, make sure your image orientation is correct here. I'm putting south at top because that's correct and I'm going to say compile image. And that looks pretty cool. It's marginally better than what I had, but again, I'm just using three here to show you the mechanics of the program. So that's how it works, but I feel that my data didn't really do this process justice. Uh, so I'm gonna make a call to a friend of mine, hopefully get some metadata. Going, man. Hey Corey, how are you? Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a while. What you been? Um, listen, I'm trying to do a video on Windupos derotation, and I'll be honest, my Jupiter data kind of sucks. So, can I use one of your examples? Well, why don't your images look better though? They're supposed to look better, you know, when you do the, the derotation correctly. So. I only got really one good frame in the middle of the session, and all the frames on the other side of the session uh, were basically terrible because of the scene. Oh, okay. So you only had a, like a couple of good stacks. <sighs> yes. Look, I live by the ocean, so I have sea air. It's really not ideal for planets. And would you just send me the data, man? I'll send it to you. No worries, dude. No worries. You got it. Okay, man.
Cheers. Bye. Last minute everything with that dude. Here's a single image from Corey's session. Uh, that's how it comes out and you can see it sharper in the middle. And here is a derotated image. So if you have enough data, this is a really good way of getting a little extra boost in your image quality. And the software is free, so it just takes a little more effort, that's all. And the Mars opposition is coming up shortly, so this is a perfect opportunity to get familiar with WinduPOS because derotating Mars is something that will work very well. I hope your astrophotography is going well. Please do feel free to tag me in photos uh, if whether or not I've helped you. I just like to see your work out there in the wild as well. Shout out to Corey. Do follow him on his channel and his live Twitch streams of Jupiter and other astronomical events. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.